Okay guys, so... Okay guys, so today we're going to discuss the Bobcat T630 compact track loader. We'll do a walk around and a review. Bryce C, this one is for you. Um, I actually made this video a very long time ago, but it's sitting in the computer and God knows where it is. So, what we're going to do is, first we'll do a review, then we'll do a little walk around of it. We'll go over what we like about it, what we don't like about it. I'm going to just move the camera a little bit closer here. Okay, so the just to tell you a little bit about the machine, it is a 78 inch wide unit. It is the it is the smallest large frame track loader that you can buy. Um, it is a radius lift path. It is one of only three CTLs that you could buy from Bobcat other than the T450 and 550. So this is the only large frame machine that you could get in a radius lift path. It has a 74 horsepower. Now they're Doosan engines. This is a Kubota. This machine is pre-emissions. It's a 2011. Uh, I don't know what tier they were up to at this particular point. Um, might have been a tier 2 or tier 3, I'm really not sure. Um, if it was a tier anything, I don't know. And it, it really doesn't have trouble starting in the cold, so that's a good thing. Um, it was the first M-series loader that they made. Basically, my father got one of the first ones that came out from the dealership. Um, other than that, so it's it's 78 inches wide with the tracks, it's 80 with the bucket, the engine 74 horsepower. They claim it'll lift max capacity 6,360 uh, pounds. I will tell you in reality it will not. The S300 can lift 6,000 pounds and it'll outlift this machine. So whether or not the vertical gives it more stability or the rather than the radius or whatever the case may be maybe the machine just isn't up to snub it just can't lift with the s300 could lift uh, that's real world experience there um the other thing is it weighs in at 8750 pounds so you're going to need at least a five or six ton trailer to tow it around i would say six ton trailer would be the way to go because once you add in attachments and dirt and tracks and fuel whatever uh, it's going to get you up there so uh, be wary of that plus the cab enclosure adds weight so i don't know if that 8750 figure takes that into consideration or if that's a standard open cab unit uh, you would have to check with the dealership on that um so is this machine a good machine to buy well i'll say yes if you want to get into the m series loaders uh pre-emissions i would go with this it starts in the cold weather it's been relatively reliable. It's a little slow with the hydraulics when you're working. So like the S300 or the T140, they cycle a lot faster. The, the Gs and the Ks, rather than this, uh, it cycles a little bit slower. Um, the power is good. It's, it's got good power. Uh, with the 864 or the T250, push it around. You know, they're pretty similar in pushing power, I would say. So, you know, like, you know, with the T T250 push a little more, I think so. But I'm going off of memory. Uh, they're pretty similar in that regard. Um, I, I wouldn't mind selling this machine to somebody. It's a good machine. Uh, if you came up to me and said, I'm be torn between a T250 and a T630, I would tell you to get the T250, just my personal preference. I, I just don't really care too much for the ends, and the reason why is there's always a little something wrong with that. Like, you know, the T590, there's always something wrong with the gauges, and this machine too. The gauges are always telling you there's a warning when there is none. And you, when you fill up the fuel tank on this machine and it's full, a warning comes on that says the fuel is at range, is it? The fuel is out of range high. 
So, I mean, what are you kidding me? Because you filled up the fuel tank? I mean, you know, I don't know if it's a computer glitch, but it happens on all of the machines my father has. They all have a little something with the computers. It, ju it just that never fails. So, to me, personally, I like the G's and the K's. They, you know, the foot pedal section here has a lot less room for dirt. So, even just a little bit of dirt down there, it'll start to mess with your pedals. Whereas the G's and the K's have a lot more floor space. A little easier to clean than the G's and the K's. I mean, these are just the little basic things that I prefer. You know, then, you know, maybe they wouldn't bother somebody else. But to me, they bother me. You know, it's just these little things, like the HVAC system doesn't work. It basically didn't work almost from when it was new. Bobcat fixed it a couple of times. It still doesn't work. You know, the G's and the K's, you know, once in a while the, the HVAC doesn't work, but they're pretty reliable, so you don't have that issue. I mean, this door, uh, this door, if you could tell, it's only got steel halfway around it. The rest is glass. So, if you're just driving along and you're shaking a little too much, it, it'll shatter. Um, better hope a piece of debris doesn't hit it, they shatter pretty pretty easily. Whereas those G, the G series, the K series, the F series doors, they could take a beating and they never broke. I never had a door break until the M's came out and we started having issues. I never had a front door break until this. So. And one time, they were just driving straight with a bucket of dirt. It was shaking, and it cracked, and it broke. So it's like, you know, what the hell, kid? So other than that, um, you know, I'm not a huge fan uh, of that. So, you know, like I said, just these, these little things, you know, they, they add up. They bother you. <coughs> Excuse me. One bad thing about YouTube Live, you can't edit out all the mistakes you make in the video, but hope you guys are enjoying it anyway. So, let's do our little walk around here of this machine. So, the, the new headlights, they're bright. They're just as good as the G's or the K's. Like I said, has all the uh, HVAC system. Like I said, it's radius lift path. Here's your lift arm stop. This has the wide track option. Now, just a footnote, you can get a T630 and a T650 with the thinner tracks, with the 12-inch tracks that will come on a 590 or a 450. Okay, pan around here. Uh, this is the hydraulic oil sight glass over here. So as you can see, it's good. See what I mean? Uh, here's the serial ID plate. It's a 2011. Doesn't have a sticker for what tier it is, so I have no idea if it even is a tier engine. I don't know. Just did a service on this machine today. We service all the machines, oil, fuel, uh, hydraulic oil. So we did all of that today. Um, has the sound deafening foam, which you could get on the G's and the K's as well. Um, this grill, again, you know, same thing. I don't, I don't like it. So, so this pops up. You get to your radiator. These two steel panels just come right off. They're very thin and flimsy. Don't let anything, God forbid, you back into anything. You know, they'll be damaged. So this thing comes off as well. You can lock it if you want. Whatever. <laughs> so don't have any issues with your radiator that you're going to have to deal with that. I'll deal with it once I put the camera down. So, has a backup alarm, the rear tailgate light, same as the G or K. Uh, your battery's over there, easy to reach. Your air filter is there. Uh, got your oil fill over here. Your oil dipstick is right there. You have the oil filter here, fuel filter here. Uh, that's good that they're right there in sight. You got your belt, you've got your alternator, and your, uh, I'm sorry, this is the starter whoops starter here alternator here okay fan belt is over here this is your fuel where you fill it up and up there is your muffler and your exhaust so basically nothing was changed in these machines until they got to the tier fours then they started you know changing things around 
And this, just so you know, is a 352 filter. This is the 517. This is the pretty, pretty much the typical filters of the G's and the K. So it was very similar in that regard. Nothing much more. Um, this is a little guard for your tailgate. If you were to back into something, it'll protect the tailgate because the tailgates are thinner now. These tailgates are not as heavy duty as, you know, the T140 or the S300, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is just the other side of the machine. Nothing really here. Your fan is in there. This is the blowout vent. Um, your grease zerks are a little tough to get to. This zerk has always been tough. Danger Zone has the exact same design. It's been unchanged since, God, since as long as these machines have been around, the zerks have been in there. Um, tie down point here. There's tie down points in the back on that guard for the tailgate. You can see this is the 80 inch bucket. Uh, this is a typical digging bucket. My father uses it as a as a as a light capacity bucket. Carries stone, whatever. Does some grading with it. Uh, he digs with a bucket of teeth. Uh, like I said, the front doors don't like them. You know they're. To me, they're not built heavy enough for what, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, for what these machines do. So, you know, like I said, as you could see, now that we're a little closer, you could see that the steel ends right about there by the yellow hand, grab handle, and the steel ends all the way down here by the latch. So this is just a rubber gasket with glass. So, you know, that's not very good for construction equipment. Um, inside, you've got nice suspension seat. The controls are pretty much the same. We have uh, hand and foot controls, so nothing is really that interesting there. Uh, power bar attached down there. We wouldn't buy a machine without power bar attached anymore. Okay, so over here is a 12 volt, 12 volt power port. Charge your phone. Uh, a radio would go in here if he had one. Over here is your HVAC control. So this is the heat and the AC over here. So if you were buying a machine and you weren't sure if the decal was missing, just always look to see if it has this switch with the snowflake. That means it has air conditioning. If it doesn't, it would just be a blank space. Just so you guys are wary of that. Um, they changed the instrumentation on these loaders. So we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, typical seat bar, you got your dome light back there, as you could see. Uh, they changed the vents. So you don't have vents over here anymore like the G's and the K's did. You don't have the vents here. So you got the vents up top. You got all these vents up here coming around. There's a vent right there behind me. And you got the vents all up here. So better ventilation job i'll tell you that i'll give the m's that they have better ventilation um with with the hvac system as far as opening windows it sucks this is this is what you got see this that's it this window is fixed it's not like the older machines where this whole thing would slide back mounted on the outside makes it a little easier to clean makes them a little more susceptible to damage and you have spots that you could lock it in place, which, let's be honest, I mean, you know, this is all the air you got. Okay, bob attach control is over here. Your parking brake is here. Uh, this is the Bix to operate. This is the lights, auxiliary hydraulics for the high flow. This machine is not a high flow regular auxiliary hydraulics and this is for the information screen that we'll go over in a moment so what i'll do is i will turn this machine on so keyless panel run stop start this was before they switched over to that turn turn key like the newer machines have so just bear with me a moment while i do this okay so now this is the screen all right uh this is just your gauges etc you could go over here that'll be your attachments how to reuse them that'll be for your user if you want to adjust the clock and the language no active warnings this is your system vitals uh when the machine is operating that would work tell you your pressures 
and if you want to program into the machine when you got to do plan maintenance okay over here like i said these are, this is the lights excuse me hour meter press it once you've got engine rpm at zero it's not on uh battery voltage at 12.3 and this is your maintenance guide again it would tell you if you needed a service we don't we don't use it uh this is a code i will take you how to view that code what it is that code is always on see how the fuel is on because it's full so and that's back to your hour meter so i apologize if you can't hear me if the engine is on i'll shut the front door uh this is the windshield wiper power on and off and this is the fluid film for that a uh, cup holder here empty space there sorry if you see my jacket empty space there cup holder same deal over here got empty space my father has all crap and your pedals are down at the bottom typical bobcat so if we start the machine okay so now the machine tells you it has an error code so now how do you get to that so now you're going to go over here to your arrows see fuel level out of range high So now it'll tell you the warning history. So if one of your operators was running this machine with a real problem, it would tell you, okay? It's gonna tell you the code that came up, who was the operator, right? That's for the code. Cause you could program up to eight codes and it'll tell you who was the operator during that time and the hours that it came up. So you know how long this situation was going on. That is a very nice feature that the G's and K's don't have. So now, if I wanted to just push the number one, I push number one, because that's the code that's active. It'll tell you fuel range out of high, fuel out of range high, uh, who is the person, and if it's active or not. So that's for that. And CM0117, so that's a different code. Click on number five, air filter is plugged. Again, came up with the owner code, and that happened two hours ago. So, probably needs a new air filter. I do not know. I wasn't the operator for this. So, that's, that's, that's the nice features of this machine. Uh, put down the seat bar, typical. Now you can work. And stop is stop. So, okay. So, like I said, I mean, if these little things don't bother you. This machine is perfectly fine. I would stay away from the early tier four machines. The ones that were made in 15, 16, 17, they had a lot of issues. So just be wary about that. And, um, you know, like I said, T630, not a terrible machine. It's good, it'll get the job done. And like I said, it's been, it's been relatively reliable. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's been relatively reliable. Um, other than that, uh, that's basically it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this walk around review. If you have any more requests, you wanna see anything else, please leave it down below in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Guys, I hope this video helps you out. If you have any questions, comments down below. So please be safe, take care, and I will talk to you guys soon.